from all across the land of Arcania, each culture pursues its own legends. They journey to Idrisil, yearning to reach the top and meet their destinies. Etrian Odyssey 5 is the latest numbered entry in Atlas's dungeon role-playing series, Etrian Odyssey. You once again form your guild to see if you have what it takes to scale to the top of Yggdrasil in this map-drawing RPG. Etrian Odyssey is known as one of the top-tier DRPGs on the market, so how does this latest entry hold up? Those of you coming into this game right off the heels of Etrian Odyssey 2 Untold may be in for a rude awakening when I say that this game has no story. Your only goal here is to climb to the top of Yggdrasil. Sure, the official story is that you're doing it for the local council, but there isn't much left to it. You get the real Etrian Odyssey experience here. Pure, unadulterated dungeon crawling. As someone who always loves a good story in their JRPGs, I was oddly okay with this. Instead of a set story of set characters, this is your adventure through Yggdrasil. What the game lacks in concrete story, it makes up in world building through adventure logs and side quests. The side quests do a very good job of shaping the world of Etrian Odyssey, and the adventure logs do a great job of enhancing your feel as an adventurer. Etrian Odyssey 5 offers an extensive level of customization when it comes to setting up your party. At the guild, you have the ability to create many teammates of different classes and races. It should be noted that each unit has two different skills available to them, race skills and class skills. Race skills are generally used for either union skills in battle or field abilities. An example of a union skill would be being able to attack twice in one turn, buff your teammates, and many more. An example of field skills would be fishing, chopping wood, mining, or gathering extra materials. So it's good to have a diverse lineup of races to have the best outcome in the dungeons. Next you have class skills. These are skills that only certain fighters have the ability to use. This is where finding the right balance for your own team comes in handy, as some classes have offensive-oriented skills, defensive, or support skills. Another extra layer of customization to this game is the ability to change classes. When you first create a unit, you can only select the class that's specific to their race. However, once they become a high enough level, you have the ability to change them to any classes you want. This can add an extra new level of strategy to how you construct your team as you can mix and match certain race skills of class skills that they never would have had to start with. The only cost to this is decreasing your unit's level by 5, but it may be worth the switch if you feel like your unit needs a new change of pace. With this level of customization, there are countless different ways for you to explore Yggdrasil as you play through. Gameplay-wise, Etrian Odyssey 5 pretty much remains unchanged from previous Etrian Odyssey games. Yggdrasil is broken up into several stratums, and your job is to traverse and map out each one. This is where the series' famous map making comes in. Every step you take in the game marks a space on your map, but it doesn't fill in the map for you. Instead, you are the one who has to fill out the map as you explore. On the touchscreen, you have the ability to create your own map of your adventure. You can be as detailed or as lazy as you want with it, but it's always best to create a map that's best for you, and one that'll help you when you inevitably have to return to that floor of the stratum again. As you explore Yggdrasil with your team of five, you'll run into many different things on your journey. Random encounters, FOEs, puzzles, and adventure logs. Random encounters are pretty much your standard fights in this game. In the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you will have a gauge that changes color. Once it becomes red, you are prone to a random encounter. Once you encounter an enemy, you go into some traditional turn-based fighting action. The combat system in this game is pretty much the same as previous Etrian Odyssey games. You have two rows of units, and you can pick your classes to go to either the front row or the back row. It's always good to have your offensive units in the front, and defensive and support units in the back. With the vast variety of classes in this game, the combat is a ton of fun, and a lot of fights can be challenging as you progress. That said, the further you get into a stratum, the higher the encounter rates will be, so it can be a bit of a tiring grind if you don't have the party members with the abilities to keep enemies away. Outside of that, the game's combat is just really enjoyable, and there's a lot of depth to it depending on how well your team is built. Now, what fun would dungeon crawling be if you had to rely on boring old dungeon floors? As you traverse more of Yggdrasil, you will run into many different puzzles on certain floors, and you will sometimes run into powerful monsters known as FOEs. FOEs are there to add a little spice to your dungeon traveling experience. These are monsters you see on the floor itself, and boy do these things pack a punch. 
it's best to avoid them when you can until you think you're ready to take them on. You should also be on the lookout for how an FOE's pattern changes, as there are many different types. There are passive ones that will only move when you move and only attack you if you're in their way, and there are the aggressive ones that will pursue you move by move until you leave their radius, so always be careful. That being said, they do provide a nice amount of experience if you do manage to emerge victorious against one, so make sure to pick and choose your battles. Something that goes a long way in replacing the game's story is the inclusion of adventure logs. As you progress each floor, you will sometimes run into random events. These events can either be trying to outsmart a snapping turtle to get a coin, to running into other adventurers. These small events make up for what little story the game has, and it does the job well in building the game's world, and helps drive the feeling home of being an adventurer on Well an Adventure. If there were a few things about the gameplay I had gripes with, it would probably be the strange difficulty spikes. An example of this would be in the first stratum. I was pretty much dominating my way through the top, and I had a pretty balanced team that could defend, support, and attack when needed. FOEs became no problem, and I could speed my way through most random encounters, so I thought the boss wouldn't be much of a problem. But boy, was I mistaken. The first boss utterly destroyed my team. I tried so many different strategies only to be thwarted every time. After dying to it quite a bit, I finally emerged victorious by the skin of my teeth. I honestly don't know what I was doing wrong, but this wasn't the only time something like this happened. There are times where I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot, gear, and level-wise, only for standard monsters or events to lay waste to my team without notice. I can see what the game was going for, and I understood it was part of the game, but I felt like there could have been better ways to ease the players into more difficult areas aside of being thrown right in. This here would probably be my biggest complaint with the game finding the right way to scale the difficulty. I am aware this may be subjective, but I felt like previous Etrian Odyssey games handled this a bit better. So outside of the random difficulty spikes, that I will be completely honest about, I felt amazing once I managed to overcome them, Etrian Odyssey 5's gameplay is just 100% solid gold. It's pure DRPG bliss and a ton of fun to sink time into drawing out the many different maps around the dungeons. As someone who was always a big on narrative in a JRPG, this all came as a huge surprise to me. Visually, Etrian Odyssey 5 is a pretty looking game. Each stratum that you visit has its own unique charm to it as you explore them. While the enemy designs are nothing special, there are quite a few unique boss fights, and for the 3DS hardware, this game is still a treat to look at. What honestly makes this game stand out is the soundtrack. My goodness does this game have a fantastic OST. I am a sucker for jazz and other big band music, and this game's score was just fantastic. Etrian Odyssey 5 is easily in my top 5 OSTs this year. The music in this game alone is worth the buy in my opinion. If I had to explain Etrian Odyssey 5 in a simple sentence, it would really have to be yet another Etrian Odyssey game. Now that I've said that, that is by no means a bad thing whatsoever. There's a saying that goes, if it's not broke, don't fix it. While it would have been nice for Atlas to have added some new mechanics into the game, I never had the feeling like anything new was needed. The challenging dungeon crawling that the game has to offer is just too much fun to almost addicting to put down. And this adventure compared to earlier Etrian Odyssey games feels extremely different so it never has the feeling of deja vu, I've just been in this place before. At the end of the day, Atlas is probably the kings of making DRPGs. Etrian Odyssey continues to show that an engrossing story isn't always needed to make a JRPG memorable. Etrian Odyssey 5 is just a game that becomes an enjoyable time sink the more and more you play. From the top tier OST, to the fluid and amazing dungeon crawling, to the oddly relaxing map drawing, Etrian Odyssey 5 stands out as a fantastic game to add to your 3DS collection. Newcomers to the series will have no troubles finding their way into this game, and veterans will find the lovable gameplay they have grown to love about the series here. Etrian Odyssey 5 is truly an odyssey of its own. And that does it for our review! To see the written review, be sure to check out our website, GamingGamma.com. A link to that review will be down in the description bar below. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them. I love hearing from you guys. Also, if you're new to my channel, hey, be sure to subscribe for future Let's Plays, reviews, commentaries, and more. And if you really love what I do, you can go check out my Patreon. Every bit helps. 
Also, if you're already subbed, be sure to click on that bell to be notified when my next review is live. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.